Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome back. This is our second stream for today, and I am going to stream Starflight. Now, as you can see, this is uh, this is an old, old game. Uh, you know, I've got the uh, wonderful fuzzy screen up here. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about this game. It was originally published for the PC back in 1989. Uh, to give you an idea of the history of this, it was later ported to the Sega Genesis console by Electronic Arts. Uh, that was in 1991. I this is back when I uh, first got into uh, when I first got my Sega Genesis, and this game came out. Uh, this was by and far one of my all-time favorite games, and I actually I have in my hands right now an original cartridge. Uh, and my Sega Genesis is in the closet, and I also have the uh, booklet that came with it. And to give you an idea of the scope of this game, the uh, the booklet includes a story um, written specifically for the game by Robert Silverberg. Um, and if you don't know who he is, you should definitely look him up. He's written some uh, some excellent science fiction uh, in in you know, over the years. And uh, he's definitely worth a read. Uh, the game itself uh, spans really, if you play it, uh, if you play it kind of straight through, spans uh, many, many hours of gameplay, and it's it's as close to an original open world game as you can get. Uh, the booklet also includes some really awesome artwork uh, to go with the game itself. Uh, it originally included a star map, but the uh, the star map, you know, for this obviously did not last. It was a giant poster. Um, a little bit of history on the game itself, on this particular cartridge itself, I originally got it with my Sega Genesis, uh, or for my Sega Genesis, from a used gaming store. Uh, and uh, I picked it up, I think that I picked it up used, um, and I played it. And I beat it, and I made a ton of notes in the booklet. And then, I don't know, probably, uh, I don't know, probably a year later, I traded it in for another game uh, to help pay for another game. And then a few years after that, I went back to that very same game store and uh, picked to pick up a copy of Starflight again because I love the game and I wanted to play it. And lo and behold, the copy that I picked up was the very same copy that I had purchased originally and traded in, and my booklet with all of my notes in it. So I have held on to this cartridge for, for dear life since uh, early, uh, well, the late 90s, actually. Um, now, I've got to warn you, the intro music on this is really obnoxious, and it's really loud and I have the volume turned way down so hopefully it won't blow your ears out if it does I apologize I'll try and get through it as quickly as I can um, so we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna load this up and this will take just a minute here <clears throat> All right, and here we go. All right, so we're just gonna dive right in. We're gonna do a new game. And the very first thing that you do is, well, obviously, you name your character. So we're just gonna go with Hob, and this is gonna be your captain. And we're gonna go done. All right, dodge as much of the uh, much of the obnoxious music as we can. All right. So a couple of things. You you really this is the the entry area for your game. You only have uh, two directions of movement: really left, right, and then you can push up to uh, to go into any door. Uh, starting over here, you've got your uh, launch bay or your airlock to get to your ship. This is where you purchase and sell uh, materials that you find on planets along with creatures. Uh, this is where you actually make upgrades and changes to your ship. This is your personnel, and this is your message board. So we're going to start with the message board. Oh, wrong button. It's been a while. So the first message, Bon Voyage, uh, and you know, it just it reads through to you, uh, telling you about what your mission is. Uh, you're about to embark on your first mission in your bank account. We will 
you will find the amount of 50,000 monetary units. This money is to be spent training your crew, configuring your ship, and purchasing any necessary materials. Um, and, you know, of course, this goes on and on. It gives you your objectives, which are seek out and explore strange new worlds. Never heard that before. Boldly go where no man has gone before. Uh, nods to Star Trek, obviously. Establish contact with any sentient sentience I cannot speak uh, capture and, and capture and bring back non-sentient life forms record alien life form data bring back alien artifacts any valuable minerals including enduram which is the fuel that you use and uh, keep from getting brutally killed which by the way in this game uh, it's it, it, it does happen it can happen uh, and often if you don't know um, I know so <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll hopefully have a fairly easy time of it. This is a game that I've, I've played enough that I can generally run it uh, without any difficulties and, and with a, a solid, clean sweep in about four hours. Um, I think if I tried to speedrun it, I could probably get that down to about an hour, hour and a half. Um, but to do it really, really well. Um, now, and then it's got a little bit more information in here. Suggest avoiding the area of space around the coordinates 13584, since that is where we lost contact with two of our earlier ships. Uh, so it's it's kind of like they only operate one ship. It's a very strange universe um, where there's only one human ship out there flying around. Apparently, even though you'll get messages that indicate otherwise. <laughs> Um, scout reports indicate a high density of minerals in the mountainous regions of the innermost planet of our system, and we found information that leads us to believe that there may be some ruins of the old empire at coordinate 17 north by 162 east on the second planet of the neighboring K-class system. Um, and then we've also received indications of alien activity in the system 175, 94, and good luck and safe return. So I'm actually I'm going to write down those those coordinates. 17 north by 162 east, because I can never remember which ones these are. And then it's second planet. Alright, so we're good on that. We're going to get out of there. And we're going to head over to personnel. Now, for personnel, you have some options available to you. I generally tend to run with an all-human crew um, for no specific reason other than it makes interacting with certain alien species significantly easier. Um, there are, uh, let me go ahead and name, um, name this crew member and I'll show you the different options that are available. Alright, B. Alright, so you have humans, the locks, the Velox are, um, are full, no, they're not the plants. Uh, the Veloxi are insect-like creatures. Uh, they do everything in sixes, so if that gives you an idea. Uh, and then you have the Thrin. The Thrin are a uh, humanoid lizard species, uh, and they eat the Elewon, which are a plant species. Uh, so, of course, there's a lot of contention between these two races. Elowan are absolutely the best communicators there are. Um, so if you have one with you, it's best to avoid any, any contact with Thrin at all. Uh, and then, of course, you have androids. And androids are only really good at two things. Um, and so, if you look here, we'll select an android. They get navigation and engineering, but they're kind of locked. They don't ever get any better. So we're actually, we're going to delete Jane, and we're going to go ahead and add, uh, let's see, what should we name this one, we'll go with, And as I said, I tend to run with a mostly human crew. Alright, and we're going to... And I assign these as I create them. It just simplifies the whole thing. Each one's created is assigned to a position. Jamie will be my science officer. My next one will be the navigator, so on and so forth. And these are the, the different... Um, 
excuse me, the, the different uh, positions that you need to have filled in your ship. Uh, <coughs> so next, by adding, and we're going to go with, we're going to have very plain names today, uh, assuming I can actually get the cursor where I want it. That was one thing that was always really uh, obnoxious about this game. Whenever you were trying to enter text, it was exceedingly, exceedingly uh, sensitive. And human. And we're going to assign Mark to be our navigator. And you can actually, you can run the ship with as little as one person if you're willing to trade that one indiv individual to do all the jobs. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter, but I like to play as if I'm, I'm a real captain, so I'm going to have a full crew. And we're going to add... Human, and let's assign David to the engineer. And I'm going to make oops. Human, and he's going to be our communications officer, and that's good. And let's see here. Um, And I almost always end up using the names of people that I know on these, so don't be surprised. Uh, human, and we're going to assign our doctor. Alright, so, three things that you absolutely have to have maxed out right away on your crew. Uh, we're going to go to training. Oh, wait, cancel. I need to go to previous. We're going to go all the way back to the start. Science. Your science officer absolutely needs to be trained to the max. Just accept it, do it, don't question it. It will save your life and it will make you tons of money. And of course I canceled that. Because, you know, smart button placement. Alright, so that. And then you need... Let's see here. Who's a sign? That's your navigator. So. Your science officer, your navigator, and communications should all be maxed out right away. Uh, we're going to turn up the navigator. And then communications. And this just makes the game significantly easier uh, doing it this way. So now we've got our crew, we're all assigned, and just make sure that the assignment's stuck, we're good. Now we're going to head to the ship. And this of course is your bread and butter. This is everything that you need for everything. Um, and you have, uh, as far as traveling around the universe, now the other part of your bread and butter is this little guy right here, your terrain vehicle. Your terrain vehicle is your planet buddy. So I'm going to do something, normally I do this last, but I'm going to do it now because it is important and relevant for your terrain vehicle. When you are traveling on planets, you have fuel. If you run out of fuel, you lose everything that your terrain vehicle is carrying and you incur a charge for terrain vehicle recovery. Uh, the flat device, which I'm going to buy right now, prevents that. Anytime you're out traveling in your terrain vehicle and you run out of fuel, bada boom, bada bing, bam, you get teleported directly back to your ship. Alright, so, I'm going to go buy that first. 
because I want to make sure that I have the correct amounts of money. And we're going to go buy ice runners, snow treads, pontoons, and extra cargo. That's all you really need on this right away. Alright, so we're done with that. We're going to go back to the ship. Now, ideally, I would like to purchase new engines right away. However, I cannot. So, we're going to spend a little bit more money on cargo pods. And then we're going to buy armor. Actually, we'll skip the armor. So that's all we're going to do. Just cargo pods. And the reason that we're doing that is because, well, this is your bread and butter. This is what's going to make it so that you can... Gotta wait for this to, to clear. Alright, there we go. So, th this is how you're going to haul all of, uh, everything that you find back to your starboard so that you can make money off of it. And so, that's why I make sure that we buy that extra cargo and those cargo pods right away. Um, so we're actually going to name this the uh, same thing as the, the ship in the booklet. We're going to name it the Intrepid. Because why not? I'm feeling uncreative on naming today. So there we are. We have the ISS Intrepid. We have a fair quantity of cargo pods. We have really crappy engines, but we have a crew. And that's what's important. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save my game. And <laughs> we're going to head right over here to the airlock. And this is where it gets interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. So, with the airlock, or with going out through the airlock and into space, as you can see, we've changed the uh, the view completely. We're now in orbit around the space station. We have a ship. We have some coordinates. There are a lot of different things to look at on this screen. So I'm going to start in the upper left, and I'm going to work work my way down. All right. So upper left corner, you've got your fuel readout uh, in system. You don't use any fuel except for landing and taking off. Uh, and when you're outside of the system, you 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 end up using fuel for all of your travel. Fuel will also be a factor in your weapons. It drains when you have your shields activated, and there are some artifacts that you can use to improve that process. You have a shield readout, an armor readout, and a damage readout right across the top, and those will show you different things based on, well, of course, whether you have your shields active, what armor you have, we don't have any at the moment, and how much damage you've taken. Uh, down in the lower left corner there, you have the current start date in the game, and then to the right you have uh, cargo. In your central screen, you've got a couple of different things. You've got your system coordinates in the upper left there of the main screen, and that is your position in the universe, uh, or more specifically the position of your star in the universe. Uh, and then you have over on the right you have a system map those are the planets that are available for you to explore and uh, you also have uh, any messages will pop up down in the bottom center of the screen so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and break orbit and just push our stick up in a direction and press the letter A and establishing orbit's pretty easy you just fly to wherever you're going and spin around in a circle and it does the rest for you now this is where it gets tricky. So with this, if you press the letter C, you receive a menu of options. So the first option is science options. Now any planet that you come to, you're going to want to scan. You're going to want to use your sensors. And once you use your sensors, it's going to give you a readout. It's going to tell you what the mass is. It's going to tell you whether there's bio, whether there's, whether there's a little bit of minerals, a lot of minerals. It's going to give you atmosphere information, hydrosphere information, lithosphere information, so what kind of minerals you can expect to pick up. Uh, obviously, this one is not a habitable planet. Uh, there's no oxygen. There's no liquid water. No go. All right, so we don't have to worry about the next part of that. We'll get to that in a little bit. 
your navigator, uh, other things, artifacts. Your science officer can show you a list of artifacts. You can also log the planet, and again, we'll get to that one here in a few moments. Uh, what we're concerned with is the navigator. So, your navigator handles arming weapons, raising shields, your star map, and landing. And we are actually going to land. Uh, your landing information, as you can see, you get another little coordinates pop up. You also get an altitude uh, uh, designator uh, along with a map. And you just use your directional pad to select where you want to land. I always land right here. It's, uh, it is just, it's a thing. I always land here, I always start here. It's like the best spot for minerals on this damn map. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to land right there. And you don't want to just let your ship smash into the ground because obviously that's going to result in, well, damage. Right? Alright. So let's get us down on the ground. We're on the ground. Disembark. Alright. So once you're disembarked, you have some things. Uh, you press your C button again to bring up your menu. Mineral scan, map, inventory, treat for anyone who's injured because apparently your whole crew rides around in the terrain vehicle and embark. Embark only works when you're close to the ship. Uh, inventory will show you what you're actually carrying around with you and as you can see all we have is a flat device at this point in time. Uh, the map doesn't really do anything. It just shows you an overview of where you're at and not a very accurate one at that. Uh, the mineral scan, however, will show you if there are minerals nearby. As you can see, we've landed right smack in the middle of a patch. So we're going to just, we're going to turn and use the D button. And bada boom, bada bing. Now, I know a little secret about this. And what really sucks is without the turbochargers, this takes forever. So we might actually, aha, get it. Platinum. Platinum is where it's at. And as you can see, we were transported back. So I'm actually, I'm going to disembark. And we're just, we're going to pick up some copper. And whatever's in, uh, in the terrain close by. And then we're going to go pick up that supercharger, because that's going to make everything a whole lot better. Ah, something else that's uh, of note. These little X's on the ground mean that there are minerals on the surface which require you to do nothing other than drive over them to pick them up. So, of course, that makes them worth it. And as you can see, you, you get slowed down by different kinds of terrain, trees and, and rocks and, and other crap. Um, something else to note, if you don't buy pontoons, you cannot cross water. If you do not buy snow treads, it is very hard to maneuver on snow, and this would be a liquid, by the way. Without pontoons, you'd sink and lose your vehicle, and you don't want to do that. Again, you incur charges. Uh, on the snow treads make it so that you can travel across snow easier, uh, so on and so forth. You know the drill. We're pretty full there, so we're going to go ahead and go back. And we're going to lift off, and we're going to go straight back to sell these minerals and go buy ourselves. Uh, oh, actually, there's one other thing we want to do first. <clears throat> one of the planets in our system is habitable. So we're going to go grab that real quick. And I do not remember which one it was off the top of my head. Not that one. I think it was the third object. Third planet. Which would not be this one, but would be the other one. But we'll check this one on our way. Oh, this is the bad boy right here. So, now as you see, science officer tells us what we're looking at. Mass is 9, we've got bio 50, minerals 35, oxygen, CO2, water. Those are your key components right there. 
So then we go sensors, we go to analysis on the science officer. And what he's going to tell us is he's going to give us more detailed, uh, or she is going to give us more detailed output of what uh, what the planet is. So object, planet, orbit number five, predominant surface is liquid, gravity is 1.6 g's, so it's a little bit high, but it's within tolerable. Atmospheric density is moderate. Temperature is Arctic to tropical. Uh, you don't want any, you, you don't want anything higher than tropical. You don't want inferno. Uh, that gets really, really ugly, and the global weather is moderate. So this is actually a really good planet to log, so we're going to do that. It's not a great planet to log, but it's good. And that's it. So now we're going to scoot right on back over to our station, and we'll show you what happens when we log a planet. Oh. Space stations do not have strong gravity. <laughs> and your navigator will help you land. So, anytime you log a planet, go to the message center, press the letter A, it's going to tell you that this was a suitable planet, and it's going to tell you how much money it's going to give you. Now, in this case, we got 35,000 uh, 35, MPs for that. Uh, and as you can see, when we go to the message directory, we have a new message. Uh, it's necessary to give you some unpleasant news. You've been aware that for the last several years, scientists have been observing anomalous fluctuations in the radiation levels of our own sun. While you've been away, it has been ascertained that the stability of our sun is definitely deteriorating. How much time we have until there is a, fla a fatally large flare, we are still not sure. But there is little doubt that this will eventually occur. As yet, we have no clue as to the cause of this instability. Uh, oops, did not mean to exit out of there. Therefore, we must assume that there is nothing we can do to change the situation. Uh, fatalist, aren't they? In view of this, the only option available to us is to get as many colonists off Earth as we can. And they don't call it Earth, it's Earth. Earth, Earth, Earth. Uh, very specifically, the space station is Earth. Uh, you can be invaluable to us in this. First, we need Endurium to power the ships we will build. Then, we will pay well for any that you can bring back. Secondly, we need to know where to send the colonists. As you may have already discovered, your ship is equipped with homing drones, which you may use to log your recommendations. This is so that we can move colonists out as quickly as possible. In addition, a sensor has been installed which will inform you of the stellar condition upon entering a system. Your ship computer will inform you in the event that a flare is imminent. We advise caution while in systems which are more than slightly unstable. Being caught in a solar flare would certainly be fatal. In your manual, we've outlined the criteria which will be important in your evaluation of viable worlds, uh, colony worlds. You will be rewarded for recommendations, yada yada yada, play, penalized for recommendations of planets which turn out to be uninhabitable. Uh, consider carefully before logging any planet, obviously. We don't want to be penalized. So, knowing which planets to log is important. So, let's go ahead and up the cargo pods. And we're going to do that. And we're going to sell our engines because now we have some cash. And let's see what kind of engines can we buy. Did I not? I did not sell those. Hang on a sec. Let's go unload the uh, materials that we bought and do a couple of other things first. So we're going to sell the copper, the antimony, and the platinum. We do not sell the endurium or the flat device. <coughs> so let's go to the terrain vehicle first and let's buy that turbocharger first. Turbocharger is a good buy, right away. And then we'll go back to the ship, and we're going to sell our engines. And now we're going to buy engines. And we can go all the way up to a class 4 engine. And the better, the better class engines are faster, and they're also more fuel efficient. So it's definitely worth doing. Um, and there we are. We're outfitted currently with the maximum number of cargo pods and class 4 engines, which is a good place to be. So then we're going to buy ourselves some armor. And we're just going to go with the class 4 armor. <clears throat> and again, it's just for protection. You'll notice that I don't buy any weapons and I don't buy any shields. Uh, 
which a lot of people might consider strange considering there are hostile aliens, but I tend to just try and outfly them rather than messing around with, uh, with trying to, um, trying to fight them. The, the fighting mechanics in this game are not stellar and you end up getting squished more often than you are successful. So it's just, uh, it's a little bit easier that way. So we're gonna head out the airlock again. Alright, and we are gonna pop right around over here. And we're gonna grab a load of minerals. And then we're going to pop to our neighboring system, and we're going to go check out those ruins. <clears throat> and there's also a habitable planet over there that we're going to log. As you can see, our terrain vehicle is much, much faster now. And also not slowed down by the uh, by the terrain as much. So to leave the system, all you actually have to do is just fly to any edge. <clears throat> now, if you're traveling through hostile systems, I recommend flying to the top or bottom edge, because even though technically it shouldn't be, it is a shorter distance. <laughs> um, so, just a, just a little one of those things. And we're going to pop right over here. To the second planet. Yeehaw. Alright, we're gonna give it a little orbit and science officer sensors. And as you can see here, we've got bio 35, minerals 20. There's not a whole lot of minerals, but we've got oxygen, CO2, and water, uh, which are all key components to what we need. And we're gonna get an analysis. Uh, 1.6 G's, again, density moderate, tropical to inferno. It's a little intemperate but not terribly so uh, and the weather is moderate so that's that's actually something that we're after so we're gonna go ahead and log this planet and now we're gonna land and it said very specifically 17 north by 162 east so we're gonna look for a specific set of coordinates and again touchy all right and this one's got some uh, got some gravity, so we're gonna. Oh, we landed in the wrong spot. We needed 162 east, because apparently I can read. So let's try that again. And this is one type of ruin that you'll run into. Uh, these types of ruins often have information when you drive up to the uh, up to the actual um, 
when you drive up to the actual building itself uh, and they'll give you information so as you can see here we've got 16 south by 20 west planet 4 of system 118 146 Due to the increased demand for hyper tritricale and a recent infestation of small furry creatures which have depleted our stock, we and it just it cuts off. So as you can see, there's another style of ruin uh, that you'll actually see later. Oh, something else I forgot to mention. You have a weapon and you can disable creatures. Um, and the creatures are of varying types. They will damage your ship if they hit you, uh, or your terrain vehicle, not your ship. They'll damage your terrain vehicle if they actually hit your terrain vehicle. Um, so if you aren't armored, they can actually do a lot of damage. They can injure, injure your personnel. They can actually do enough damage to destroy it. So things to avoid. There are some creatures which are more hostile. Uh, in their behavior, so they will actually actively seek you out to attack you on some planets, so watch out for those as well. And that's, of course, assuming you ever play this game. <laughs> I don't know if anybody will, uh, but it is, uh, it is one of my favorites, so here we are. And flying creatures are fun to try and catch. So, for flying creatures, you have to get close and get them down to the ground, and then you have to shoot them. And that is easier said than done, let me tell you. And of course we're not going to actually manage to do that, so we're just going to get out of here. And... We're going to head off. Now, I know from experience playing that there's really nothing else of value in this system. So we're, gonna, we're just going to move right on out. And we're going to pop back over here, we're going to collect our uh, our reward for a habitable planet, sell some more minerals, pick up some endurium and another artifact if we've got enough money for it, and then we are going to pop our happy little booties to a couple of other habitable planets. And also provide some training for our guys, because that's important. Actually, let's go read our message first. I forgot to do that. 30,000. Not bad. Oh, we've got a new message. Caution! To all captains, one of our ships was just destroyed by what reports indicate to be androids, approximately 20 sectors directly coreward of Arth. Uh, when passing through this area, proceed with caution. That's actually where we're going. Oh, so, training first. Then we'll go buy Endurium. <laughs> And this, you know, the way that I play, you don't often end up needing the medical or the engineering, but it's better safe than sorry. Uh, the, the engineer, the more skill your engineer has, the quicker they're able to repair your ship and with less materials um, and with the, uh, with the medical, uh, healing your people is faster, obviously. I'm going to go ahead and buy the heavy armor for that, and we're going to go back to the ship, 
and we're going to sell the engines again and see if we've got enough to buy the class fives. No, we are not there. That is a bummer. I was really hoping we'd have enough, but it is what it is. Life goes on. Exit out of here. Let's go grab some endurium. We'll have we'll have enough the next go around. Goodbye. The whining orb. And and this artifact right here, this is actually really handy. A little bit later in the game, when you go into a certain sector, it makes this one particular species really, really obnoxiously uh, obsequious, which is to say that they are very subservient towards you. Um, so we're just going to buy 10 units of this. Oops. Save our game. We do save often. And into space we go. All right. So now we are going to go. We are going to hit a flux. Maybe. There we go. Clicked the mouse on another window and it got angry. Alright, so out in the great wide universe there are these little sparkly things called fluxes. Fluxes take you places, and sometimes those places are bad. If your uh, navigator isn't trained up enough, you will not even be able to see the sparkly things. You will simply run into them and go strange places. Uh, so be aware. That's why I train my navigator right away. It makes it so much easier to play. So we're going to pop through this flux, and we're going to pull up the star map. And I'm going to show you where we ended up. And unfortunately, there is no zoom on this, so this is what you get on the star map. Now, the star map does a couple of things. Um, it lets you see destinations, so you can actually see every single one of those little dots as a star. The big purple things are nebulas, and it will show you fluxes that you have traveled across. Um, I hit the B button, which disables the uh, this menu here, which is necessary when you're trying to look at systems that are up at the very, very top edge. Um, one thing that you'll note on here is that this will tell you how much fuel it's going to cost to go somewhere. So how much fuel will you expend to go here? It's going to cost you one fuel. If you want to go here, and this is this assumes that you're flying directly there. Uh, if you want to go down here to this happy little blue planet, uh, and the controls are just touchy as all get out. Um, if you want to go to this happy little blue planet, you're probably looking at right around 10 fuel, as it stands right now. Um, you know, and of course, uh, further out is more fuel from where you are. And there are fluxes all over the place that can take you all kinds of nifty places. Um, and if you get a good enough flux network, you can go a lot of places without traveling very far at all. But right now, we're going to deal with these guys. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to scan these. And as you can see, they are spatulas, flying spatulas, and they are Mechan 9, and they want us to respond. So we're going to do that. It doesn't matter how you respond to them. You have some options, obsequious, friendly, and hostile. We're just going to go with friendly. And as you can see, we are very, very eloquent captains. And now we wait. And they give us a statement that makes absolutely no sense. You've been delayed. We were not programmed for this contingency. Well, duh. And we're just going to give them a generic statement in return because they're not going to respond in any way that makes any sense unless you've done this before and done a little bit of investigation. <clears throat> and then they say, we must verify. Now, the investigation portion of this is you would eventually discover that they are 
androids created by the Empire and your ship is of Empire derivative technology, it's just significantly newer than what they were expecting. Uh, group 9 is a group they were waiting for, we're going to say yes, uh, and it was a special colonization effort. <coughs> and again, they weren't programmed for this contingency, so it's all good. And I usually just wait for them to say stuff, because, eh. And you also have the option of just flying away from them. I, I tend to try and interact with them because the place that I'm going has a planet that they patrol that I want to be able to send people to colonize. And that planet is right here. 145. Oh, see, they're back again. Got it. In this particular instance, uh, alright, I'll respond. Friendly. Well, that's a hell of a way to start a conversation. We must verify. Haven, heaven awaits, or haven. I I don't know if that was supposed to be heaven or haven, but I consider it to be haven awaits. And it says, are you prepared? We say yes, because that's where we want to go. This is their idyllic planet. It's actually okay. And then we wait. Do you serve Leighton? The answer is no. Leighton bad. Say no to Leighton. And we are being scanned. We're going to say no. And what they asked is they've been waiting long for Noah. Should they continue to do so? We're going to say that we are Noah. And they're going to say that they weren't prepared for this contingency. Congratulations. And hopefully they'll ask us ah code blue we're gonna say no we want them to go to code red which means colonists and this is where they give us information so this is actually really really handy so we can go uh, we can ask for general information we can ask for the ancients uh, this is the they'll answer like four or five sometimes six questions um, and they'll give you little tidbits of information. The Institute was a society of scientists and other intellectuals uh, convinced of the Empire's impending destruction. Uh, ask for Old Empire. And this, you know, is information on, on how the Empire was attacked, where those attacks came from. Um, and then we can ask, we'll go back to the old Empire. And again, this is all general information that they give you. I don't think they actually provide any specifics in uh, in, the, in these interactions. And I, I can't remember. It's been a while since I've played. Um, but they do tell you their mission. So their mission was to establish the underground colony of heaven. Uh, we were to be followed by group nine one year later, but you did not arrive. Um, and so we'll question them again, see if we can get any more information. Unfortunately, they're done answering questions, so we're going to pack our bags and fly along here. And they'll go away and we'll pop back into the real world here eventually. Sometimes it goes quicker than others. There we go. Alright. So we're going to go hit this planet, this system here, and we're going to head straight for the blue dot. And of course we're going to get interrupted along the way. As you can see, right now I'm just going to ignore them. And that actually exited a lot quicker than I expected it to. There's the ones we want to bother. And I'm going to preemptively hail them. Uh, 
have a question about other races. And they're not going to answer any questions because every single interaction with these guys requires them to verify. Oh, wait. I'm amazed they actually answered a question without verifying. Uh, Indurium was first discovered in some ancient ruins. And the ancients are what the ancients are. Um, other races. You lack. You lack. They are nasty customers. Evil, vicious, vile bastards. They'll uh, cut you down before you even know what hits you if you aren't careful. And they have some, some specific territories in their systems. <coughs> and that's actually a clue, by the way. And you won't know that until much, much later in the game. Um... Let's go with themselves again. Again, more information. They left Earth in 3479, sent out by the Institute with instructions for standard NOAA project procedure. Um, let's see if we can get them to answer one more question. Increase in the stability of stars coreward. Uh, there are many references in our databanks to the encroaching dead zone. Uh, again, uh, important information. But it doesn't really, uh, really make sense until much, much later in the game. And then, you know, information about the ancients being many hundreds of millions of years old. This is the most uh, loquacious that the Mechan have been in my gameplays. Ah, uh, yeah. That'll tell you about the ULEC right there. Four ships to one. They are nasty. And I just keep asking questions until they terminate. go old empire good news we survived there we go they got tired of being loquacious They got sick of speckin' too. Alright. Let's get us some orbit. Orbit established. Scan. Give it a scan. Beautiful. 60, 65. Oxygen, water, magnesium, cobalt, and iron. We're gonna analyze it. 1.5 G, primarily liquid. Density is moderate. Arctic to tropical. Weather is calm. So we log that bad boy. Log. And that's actually all we do with that. We don't do anything else. And we just get the heck out of Mechan space because it's really annoying. And we are going to bump back through that flux and head back home. To our primary system. Solar system. And we're going to go do just a little bit of mining. And then I think that will be the end of our session today.
And we'll go read our messages. And optimal planet, 45,000 MUs for this recommendation. Isn't that awesome? And no new messages. So, groovy, groovy. Alright, let's go unload our mineral. And. We are going to replace our engines with the class 5s. Because we now have enough to do it. And we still got 43,000 MUs to go. So, we're not actually going to do anything else at this point. We are going to go buy some Endurium. And that's going to be our game today. And we're just going to buy another 10. Now we'll go 15 units. And there we go. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to save our game. And we uh, are going to go ahead and get off of here. Um, Hopefully I'll be able to uh, stream this again here in the very near future. If you guys enjoyed the video, uh, enjoyed listening to me talk about this game, uh, enjoyed anything about it, please make sure to uh, follow or subscribe uh, and follow me on YouTube. Uh, you can also follow me here on Twitch uh, and your comments and suggestions are always welcome. Uh, keep in mind uh, that within the next uh, three weeks or so, uh, my streaming timetable is going to be changing. Uh, once that happens, I will attempt to post a consistent schedule of when I'll be streaming and what games I'll be streaming at those times. Uh, catch me again for Space Engineers uh, later on this week. Diablo 3 is at uh, 1 o'clock a.m. Mountain Standard Time, Thursday mornings. Uh, and as always, have a great day. Enjoy your games, and uh, this has been Hob and Church of Hob Gaming.